Okay. <coughs> uh oh. Um, I have a feeling that this is going to be a demonstration in two parts. All right. So, sandblasting itself. I'm going to screen share now. And you can watch this video. The first video is of um, loading, turning on the sandblaster and putting the glass in there. So here I am turning the crank on and going into the <clears throat> room, pl um, plugging in the dust collector and the um, light. Now, I just wanna stop the video and say um, that your system will be different. All sandblaster systems are different. Most sandblasters have a switch on them that turns the dust collector and the light on at the same time. For whatever reason, my uh, light is connected to a, a cord that I have to plug in and same with the dust collector. So that's what I was doing there. Okay. And here I am picking up the glass and taking it over to the sandblaster and sticking it inside the sandblaster. Right, there's a little grate in there. One thing that is, you're not seeing here is you should check the level of grit. You look down into the siphon and see if there's grit in there. Now, how much grit is enough grit? It, it doesn't really take much. As long as it's recycling through the system um, adequately, I usually use about, uh, I don't know, a uh, 24 ounces of, of uh, 120 sandblast me aluminum oxide. So you look down in there because sometimes there's no grit left and then you'll be sandblasting all day and nothing's happening and that's frustrating. All right, back to the video. <clears throat> I'm shutting the door. And now I'm gonna turn the pressure up. I would like to sandblast at 100 PSI. That's pretty high. All right, so <clears throat> remember the dust collector is really loud. So when you turn it on, you are going to be listening to that. All right, now here is the video of the actual sandblasting. This is the one that's seven minutes long. Now this is not the most interesting video in the whole wide world, but if you are going to be sandblasting, I think you should watch it because I'm gonna be talking through it and giving you tips. Okay. It's not going. All right, here we go. So here I am putting on the gloves picking up the piece of glass with the stencil on it. And in a second, you'll see I'm picking up the gun. And I'm starting to sandblast. And I'm sandblasting by making sort of little circular motions. And I am repeatedly putting it up to the window so I can see what's happening. So you can see a little bit what's happening. It is very dusty in there, but it's probably the best view you're going to get of someone else sandblasting short of like real Hollywood filmmakers doing this. So I'm just holding the gun about, I don't know, four inches away from the surface. You can experiment with different distances if you want. And it goes pretty fast. Um, different pressures, it will go a little slower. But at 100 PSI, it's going to go super fast. You should be prepared to hold on tight to that piece of glass because that 100 pounds is hitting it, right? And ideally, you are going like this to the glass. Things tend to, you, you want to be able to see, so you tend to tilt it around a bit. Anyway, I'm almost done with the first pass of sandblasting. And it's so loud in there, you wouldn't believe it, but you have need to wear hearing protection if that's an issue for you. And then it's done. And so there's gonna be like a, a weird, awkward, oh no, I'm gonna do the other one, I forgot about that. So here's the red one. Red flash tends to be softer than blue. So if it sandblasts faster, they all sandblast at different rates. You'll get used to it or you'll learn about it. 
<clears throat> so yeah, look how fast it's going, nice and fast. That's partly because my sandblast system is in terrific condition. And here's that piece of glass. You can sing if you want. So things to keep in mind when you're sandblasting is how far away are you from the piece of glass? Because if you're right up close, the spray will be smaller. And if you're way far away, it'll be much more diffuse. All right, now having finished sandblasting those two pieces of glass, I'm going to take them out of the sandblaster and bring the blue one over to a table where I am going to remove the second layer, which is all the areas in the drawing that are gray. Right? So anything that looks gray in that drawing is coming off now. And as you will see, I am super impatient. So I just start doing this really roughly. You can be a little more delicate about it if you want, but I have no time waits for no human. So uh, I'm picking up the little bits of glass, or little bits of contact paper. And here's where I get impatient. Let's just scrape these suckers off. Enough already. I'm ready to sandblast. <clears throat> I want to be done. By the way, when you pull up the resist, it leaves a little bit of schmutz. Schmutz is Yiddish for dirt. And that dirt is sticky because it's from the stick stickum of the resist. And you will notice that I'm sort of brushing it off. That's, and I'm actually brushing hard to get rid of some of that stickum because that will act as a resist too, which can be interesting. It can create interesting textures, but if it's not what you want, you will not be happy to see it. Remember with subtractive techniques such as sand carving or engraving, you can't undo it. So it's for the brave of heart. All right, so I'm almost done. And you can see I've forgotten one of the little birds. I totally forgot to sandblast that the first time. Uh, oops, that happens. And then what I'm doing is I'm collecting the detritus from the stencil and I am disposing of it responsibly in a trash can. I am not leaving it right where it is. I am not throwing it on the floor. I am putting it in a trash can, which of course you will be doing too. And now I am reloading the sandblaster. takes a second for me to get the gloves on. So I've put the gloves on and I am going to sandblast the areas that are going to be a lighter blue. And this will not take any time at all. So I'm just going over it and I'm stopping every now and then and looking to see what I'm doing. That's important. You can, uh, depending on how messed up your sandblaster window is, um, you can see through and see what you're doing. Don't forget to do that. All right, when it appears that there is enough, I'm gonna take it out of the sandblaster again and remove all the rest of the stencil. And that's what's happening here. So when I'm done, every bit of this piece of glass is going to be sandblasted. Now, of course, that leaves a frosted surface, which some people really don't like because the shiny surface of the glass is really pretty. You can fire polish it to get that back, although it never comes back quite as nice as it was. Um, I personally do not worry about it. So you can always uh, put that to the um, face uh, the other way so that people see the other side, which is still shiny if you want. There are various things you can do. And look, I am disposing of that mask responsibly in a trash can. I'm good. All right, and now bringing it back to the sandblaster. And I am going to sandblast the whole rest of the piece. And the sand will go to the areas that are white and that are already sandblasted and make them a little lighter. Um, so keep that in mind, but don't worry too much about it.
sandblasting away. This takes a little longer because there's kind of a lot of space around it. I don't know if you caught that, but I did do the bird that I forgot in the second pass. So it's now white. And we're almost done. And that's really it. So now I am going to stop sharing and I am going to, uh, uh, oh, I didn't mean to stop sharing. Sorry about that. <clears throat> <clears throat> here is what those two pieces look like done and they're right here but I think it's much easier to see them in a photograph still better long positions that's what they look like finished so you can see the ambient uh, atmospheric sandblasting in the background here and it's all ready to have more detail put on it with engraving, which I will show you in another video. But there's a couple more points I wanna make. And one is people are afraid of sandblasting. Like I said, it's kind of permanent. You remove that color, it's not coming back. So this is an example of a pattern where the uh, person did not sandblast enough. Um, there's really nothing happening here. I think it's a good idea to experiment with some small pieces of glass to see what happens before you do any major projects. But basically, look to see what's happening. There is a light in the sand blaster and you should be able to see. And that is that. Thank you for watching.